Hey, welcome to another episode of A Real Point of View. Look who is joining me all the way from Maryland, everybody. Yay. The movie maven herself is Karen D. Hello. <laughs> welcome. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> Glad to see you here in the indie studio. <laughs> and maybe one day we'll be in the Maryland studio. Maybe one day. And maybe we'll, we'll be in the other studio. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe the other studio in Indiana there too. Yes, I'm aware. That's crazy. <laughs> Um, wow. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you oh, for having me. I'm glad you're here too. It was a long trip, I know, but About you made it safe or and sound. days. No. Hours. Hours. Seem like days. It seemed like days. Hours to me. Days to you. <laughs> days to me. <laughs> um, but glad you made it safe. So, ladies and gentlemen, now we're going to talk about movies. So, this has been an interesting year, but today's episode is about the future. So we're looking to see the movies that we like coming up that we think are going to be worth the watch. And that's why I want to discuss that with you so that you'll be watching out for them and waiting for them in, in, in anticipation of them coming out. So you kind of have a, a good knack of overview, Karen. So what do you think about the, what's coming up? Well, I was thinking about that, and to me, I have to say that so far, 2019 seems sort of a strange year for movies. Avengers Endgame, in my mind, just sucked all the air out of the room. It sucked all the air out of the room and continued to do that, even from Avengers Civil War. And especially in 2019, up until the time that that movie was released, there was so much anticipation about what that movie was going to do, what it was what was going to happen to resolve the issues left open at the end of Civil War, and whether it would beat, you know, Titanic in terms of worldwide, you know, box office records, and, you know, who was it going to eclipse? Well, would it eclipse Black Panther? Would it not? It, it, it did. Um, and, and I think it even, I think it actually finally ended up even eclipsing Titanic, although for a while that seemed to be in doubt. So, all of that, and I think my opinion that the box office, in other words, the theater going public, kind of lost interest in anything else mm -hmm. except for Avengers Endgame. But that was released in April, and it's sort of, like I said, sucked all the air out of the room for the following month. So now we're past that. Mm -hmm. And I guess I'm hoping that that will mean that audiences might be more open to looking at different types of films, not necessarily films that don't have a superhero in them, for example, or mm. even a whole bunch of them, and films that might be more character-driven, less special effects heavy, less technologically driven, less mythological, and more like based on actual real people, real situations. Um, so I'm hoping maybe that will be what happens. From now until December, you're going to see more and more studios releasing their movies that they think will qualify for Academy Award consideration. That means their best and brightest films, the ones that make the rounds at the film festivals and the ones that they, that they want to screen for the critics, those are the ones that they're going to be beginning to show. We're going to see more and more of that as the rest of the year wears on. So it'll be interesting to see whether audiences do turn their attention away from the next superhero movie and more towards, you know, a rom-com or a mystery or, you know, a biography, a drama, whatever it is that sort of focuses more on, like, the art of storytelling. Mm. And I, I don't know if that'll happen or not. It'll be interesting to watch. I think it will be interesting. I think um, even some of the more uh, recent films, uh, like The Lion King, for example. Um, now, here's a situation. It was an animated film that came out years ago. And so the rebirth of it with new actors, with only one actor actually remaining the same, and that's James Earl Jones. Um, but new actors, more of a millennium uh, of actors. And uh, I think I actually saw the movie. Mm -hmm. It's a good movie. I still don't think it was quite as good to me as the original. Um, Fair enough. And the acting, the voiceovers, maybe not quite as good, but 
the technology that's here now where it's very lifelike, I, I enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. And you talked about 3D, that was a 3D, so I had 3D and IMAX, so I, I truly enjoyed that. But still not quite the same, but it didn't do a bad job, so that's interesting. And it seems like there are more and more films um, that started off in the pure cartoon illustrated animation and now getting in more into the lifelike uh, genre like Aladdin, for example. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and um, there are a few more movies that Disney's doing that are actually uh, coming to life in using people this time uh, as opposed to just the, the, the animation. And one movie that I'm looking forward to seeing, which is Mulan. I enjoyed it in the cartoon form. The storyline was wonderful. Mm -hmm. And to see I how well too. Yeah, to see how well that's gonna do now that it's real people doing the acting. Um, the trailers that I've seen so far look really good. So I'm I'm in anticipation of that. And Disney team seems to be doing a really good job. Now let's be honest, the Disney is Marvel. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the Marvel Universe is encompassed in the Disney, in the Disney world as well, in the quote unquote Disney universe. So I'm looking forward to some of those films that uh, the Disney studios are going to be putting out in the future. Any particular film that's hitting you uh, more impactfully right now that you're looking forward to seeing? There was a movie I cannot wait to see, and that is Harriet. Uh, Yes, this movie's coming out in November, and it is finally the big screen treatment of the Harriet Tubman story that has been so bloody long overdue. This woman was absolutely amazing, and, you know, it's nice to see finally some, some producers at least showing some interest in the lives and stories of women and their ups and downs, their arcs and their struggles, and not, not the struggles of an ingenue and whether she's gonna catch her next boyfriend, but women with real actual problems, mm -hmm. women with real actual issues to address and solve. And Harriet Tubman, I mean, I think, I think although there's been, there's been a lot of controversy over her appearance on the $20 bill, whether her, her portrait will grace the $20 bill or not, in spite of the unfortunate, the unfortunate situation of that debate, the timing of the debate couldn't be better to spark interest in this movie. Mm -hmm. um, because now people who, I mean, people profess to know about Harriet Tubman. I mean, we, even when they weren't teaching black history in school, they were talking about Harriet Tubman. I mean, mm -hmm. I remember learning about Harriet Tubman. Right. right. But, but what do we really know about her? And, and in fact, the way in which her, her presence and her impact on American history was taught makes her seem actually more like just this sort of ghostly myth figure than an actual living flesh and blood human being with feelings. And, I mean, she just seemed, you know, this sort of stoic, like, you know, wooden figure who just moved through you're free, you're free, you get freedom, you get freedom, you get freedom. Okay, everybody's free. Okay, that's it, no, that's, that's all she wrote. No, she, she suffered, she was a slave, she suffered horrifically as a slave. I mean, I think one of her slave masters used either a horseshoe or some sort of, or something that was metal that, and basically whacked her on the head so, so hard that, she suffered with the, the pain of that injury for the rest of her life. Um, she was not only, I mean, and she, because she was a slave, she knew exactly what she was asking people to do when she said, you cannot live like this anymore. And if you don't want to live like this anymore, I will help you find freedom. She found freedom for herself. She knew how precious it was. So it wasn't like she was, you know, like one of the house slaves sitting on some rocking chair going, gee, I wish I, I bet it might be nice to be free. Let's give it a shot and see how it works. No, she worked in the fields. 
she suffered at the hands of brutal slave masters and she made, she got herself free. So when she told people she would help them and then she knew what she was talking about. And when people who initially said, yes, I think I, I might like to be free. And then when they realized how hard freedom was and mm -hmm. they started wavering, that's what she's like, you don't get to go back on this. You're either going to die trying to be free or you will die right now. You do the math, you pick the choice. But I have no problem shooting you right now. If you think you're going back, you're not. You're going, you're gonna, either gonna be dead now or you're gonna die trying to get free. And most people are like, uh, I'll just, I'll try freedom. Um, but she did not play. She was not, some, she was not trifling. She was someone to be taken seriously. She knew exactly what she was talking about. Not only that, she was incredibly courageous. She was a spy for the Civil War. Can you imagine how difficult it is to be a black woman who is pretending to be, I don't know, a slave or a maid or a seamstress or something, but is really a spy for the Union Army? incredibly effective spy for the Union Army, I might add. This woman was fierce, absolutely fierce, but she was also a human being, Sure, you know? So I want to see a story about this human being who lived an extraordinary life. That's what I want to see. And it's about time that we saw this story. It's way past time. So I'm just, I'm thrilled that this movie is finally coming out. And in fact, if I, I believe Barry Jenkins wrote the screenplay mm -hmm. and he won an Academy Award for Moonlighting. So I'm thinking it might be good. Gee, I wish you would get excited about it coming out and show a little passion. Oh, okay. Because um, <laughs> it's really going to be a, a really great movie. Gee, Karen. <laughs> Pump it up a little bit. Oh, okay. <laughs> what the risk of overplaying my head? Go see this movie. Yeah, I think it's going to be special. Uh, the trailer that I've seen it for so far looks like it's going to be special, and I'm I'm hoping that for it. Uh, true stories for me, and things stories that are based off of true stories um, are wonderful movies, and uh, for the most part. And it's not a documentary. It's talking about the life and the passion that this woman had for life, really. Um, and the, the model that they use in the military, not leaving anybody behind. I think that's a wonderful essence for this film. Mm -hmm. So I agree with you. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it as well. November, November, November. 2019. Just in time for Academy Award consideration. So, Not that I'm dropping any hints, but... Oh, you never know. I'll, I'll, I'll pray for anything good for every good movie. Mm -hmm. um, so, one of my friends caught me at my daytime job and said, Greg, have you seen the trailer yet? And I kind of looked at him funny, like, what trailer? Going ahead of a couple hours, another one of my associates came up to me and says, Hey, Greg, have you seen the trailer? And I'm like, what trailer? And then another guy said, hey, Greg, have you seen? I know, the trailer. <laughs> and then I, I was happy to say Maverick. So Top Gun Maverick is coming out. Um, for those of us who saw Top Gun years and years ago I did with, see it. with Tom Cruise, it was a really good movie. Um, it was a hunk, a hunk of bird in love there. Yeah, it was basically a movie about um, the top flight naval, uh, naval aviators. Um, and then going to a school to get more training and more in-depth training to be even better on naval aviators. And Tom Cruise was the main star of that movie. Well, Tom Cruise is making another appearance. Hmm. Only this time it's years later, and now he's actually going to be at the flight school. Is he going to be an instructor? I think he's going to be an instructor. Oh, wow, okay. He takes his old motorcycle out of the dusty dirt, so the dusty dust, and drives it on the on the uh, the tarmac just like he did before. He's Only not, this time, he was driving it the other way. Oh, he's not flying. I mean, he was he's still doing his own stunts. They couldn't get him to be a pilot. No, he's a pilot. Oh, okay. In the first movie, he's riding his motorcycle going to the school oh, to be a member no. of the class. This time, he's going to be a, to be an instructor. So it's <laughs> going to be interesting to see what the new class of recruits 
are going to be when you're the maverick and you're the stud and you're the 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 the, the guy who's blowing out his chest and beating right like King Kong. What's it going to be like to try to tame some other people who are just like you? Mm, there's the question. I don't know. And every fight maverick style fighter pilot in the Navy, very similar. You have to have a lot of moxie. You have to have a lot of fortitude, a great attitude, and you gotta be a little cocky to get in that cockpit every day and mm -hmm. try to fly these planes that are going so fast that it doesn't take but a minute, less than a minute, to make a mistake and not make it back. Right. So one of the reasons for these schools is to get better at those things so that you always come back and you get your teammates to come back with you. So I'm looking forward to it. It looks like it's going to be pretty decent. Saw the trailer finally after so many people approached me about it. Um, and I agree with them. Pretty awesome. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that coming out pretty soon. When, when does the launch I don't know exactly. Oh, oh okay. Um, I apologize, everybody. I don't have the date. Um, but just look for it. Um, commercials. If nothing else, go to YouTube. Shame this plug. Go to YouTube <laughs> and uh, check it out. So and actually, the, actually, the the trailer I saw said coming soon. It didn't give me a date. Oh, it didn't give a date. Okay. Not the one I saw, but that doesn't mean it's not out there yet. So, um, so one other movie, real quick for me. Um, one of my favorite actors in the last five to six years has won an Academy Award and nominated more than once, has been a wonderful actor on television. Uh, he's been in sci-fi movies. He's been in uh, a Marvel-esque feature television series. He was in that movie that you just mentioned. Um, by, uh, what was the name of the movie? Moonlight. Moonlight. Got nominated for that. This is an awesome actor. Um, what was the name of the movie with the uh, woman who were the mathematicians? Uh, Ken Vickers. He was in that. I'm speaking of Mahershala Ali, and he's playing one of my favorite characters <clears throat> in the Marvel, <clears throat> excuse me, in the Marvel Universe, and that's Blade. Oh, really? So he's taking over for Wesley Snipes in Blade as Blade. And so I'm looking forward to that. Hmm. This guy was impressive in Luke Cage, uh, which is on Netflix, uh, as a villain. He was the villain? And he was villain in Luke Cage? He was one of the villains in Luke Cage. Oh. He owned the, uh, the uh, discotheque or the, the bar, the, the, the bar that... Um, uh, where they hit all the, the drugs and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, the guns and stuff like that. I haven't seen Luke Cage yet. So. Oh, my goodness. I know. Alfie I'm, just, plays, I, I'm savoring it because it's not coming back. Alfie Wooder plays his cousin in the, in the feature. <laughs> it's, 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 his, his character is pretty awesome. Don't mean to stutter, but, but his character is pretty awesome. And he's clearly one of the better actors out there. Yes. Right now, you can see him on uh, the True, Detective True Detectives, exactly, in a rather interesting uh, type of uh, ep uh, ep episodic series because it goes from him being a young man to being an old man, uh, still trying to solve a, a case that uh, had, had never been solved, but it was a case that he just feels he needs to always stay and be a part of until it, it gets solved. So. Um, very different approach, um, but no less an actor to play the role than Mahershala Ali. He is one fine actor. Yes, and I think he's perfect in my mind for Blade, so I'm looking forward to that. Maybe, he was, maybe he'll be better than Wesley Snipes was. I don't know. Um, I'm used to a very martial arts-esque Blade. And I think Wesley Simpson did a really good job as the character. So I'd like to see Mahershala Ali, who I think is, if not is good, if not a better actor, maybe, <clears throat> than Wesley Snipes. 
see how well he does in this role. But normally I would, wouldn't be as excited for someone trying to reprise a role, but I am now. I'm pretty excited. Uh, he's he such a good actor. Exciting. I wish she would come back. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to, to keep from being so sorrowful <laughs> about it. I can tell you're extremely excited. Yeah, it's, it's going to be wonderful. That has uh, you written all a, over it. It does. It's such a stellar actor, too. Um, I was, you know, I'm, I'm a Marvel comic book guy from the back, and Blade was not in my radar. Oh, wow. It wasn't in my radar until very recent, truly, uh, last 20 years. Um, and I, when I start reading the actual comic book, I liked it even more. Now, the comic book version and the version that's been portrayed both on the big screen and the small screen, because it was a TV series for a little while, too. Mm -hmm. Um, was good and close, but I think there's more to that. I'm hoping Disney Marvel will um, uh, take a look at and have that be a part of this Blade's essence. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. And it's a character that a lot of people don't even know was Marvel. Hmm. Interesting. It is. It's gonna be. Mm -hmm. Well, um, another movie that I'm looking forward to is a movie that I guess comes under the heading of Guilty Pleasure. Okay. It's coming out in September. Can you guess? September. Yeah. Downton Abbey. Oh my goodness. Downton Abbey, the movie. It became Brit on us. I, I'm, I'm a closet Anglophile, what can I tell you? Uh -huh. um, and I loved, in fact, I started watching the um, television series all over again because it's on, it's on um, Amazon Prime. Like okay. all the whole series is on Amazon Prime. And you can, for those of our audience who are Amazon Prime members, you can watch it with no commercial interruptions, all, all six seasons. The British version, which is really the true version, not the Americanized seven seven season version, because they kept breaking up whole episodes into, you know, one hour segments. Some of the episodes in the British series lasted for longer than an hour. Some of them were like an hour and twenty minutes or whatever. So, if you watch it on Amazon, you get the whole sense of that. So, anyway, I love. Downton Abbey. It's just, it's brilliant. The television series was brilliant in my mind because Julian Fellows, who created it, has put so much research into understanding the ways of the British uh, ultra wealthy mm -hmm. and, it, and, and royalty and what the, what manners were, what life was like. And, you know, the contrast between the lives of the servants who the the maids and butlers and the other servants who lived on the grounds versus those people who were there you know um those people who they served mm -hmm. the countesses the counts the earls the you know um and their visitors and and other family the family members and whatever and there were very um, palpable differentiations between the the servants and the the you know people who lived who were part of the class the upper class mm -hmm. who lived on the premises but there were also ways in which their lives collided or merged in really odd ways and um, Downton Abbey takes place towards um, the end of the first decade it begins like the end of the first decade of the 20th century mm. but it morphs into world war one and remember england entered became part of world war one well before the american right. before the americans entered world war one and i think it was just brilliant in the television series the way that julian fellows identified the ways in which war completely changed perceptions about the place of men and women, the place, what class really means, the horrors of war, um, 
the expectations um, when it comes to, you know, what it means to serve your country. Mm -hmm. Just brilliant in terms in terms of that. So, and then the series went on from there. Um, there was the, suff the suffrage movement in the Eng in England, which took place before the suffragette movement in the United States. Women got the vote in England before women in the United States did. But that you know that controversy was again, I think, very well handled by the cast by the storylines. And then from there, it's like the industrial age, and um, what does it really mean if you if you're the steward of a massive place like Downton Abbey, and you're actually responsible for all these lives, but at the same time, you want to make things more efficient, and you want to bring more machinery in. Does that mean that you're getting rid of jobs? Does that mean that you need to fire people, lay people off? All these things that we go through today were things that they were going through then, and it's so it's really interesting to watch. So, Down, Downton Abbey, the movie begins with the fact that the Queen is coming to visit the Queen, and this would be, I guess, Queen Victoria? Queen Elizabeth I, I can't remember. It's not Queen Elizabeth II, because she didn't become Queen until 1953. But whoever was queen before that, <laughs> one of those queens has come to visit. Okay. So, um, and so the household is getting ready to prepare for this incredible honor, but there are also all of these simmering sorts of resentments and issues and problems that are percolating because of the queen's upcoming visit. So that, and that's all I know about it, but I can't, and I, like I said, it's a guilty pleasure because I'm kind of a closet anglophile. Um, but I, I do want to see what they, how they handle this movie and what kinds of issues come up that relate to the visit of the queen. And they, I believe that they've gotten back um, the original, the original cast leaves everybody who was left standing by the end of, the, the television series, I think they're all going to be back. So. You know, speaking of movies that are based off of television series, a movie that I'm looking forward to that I just found out today is actually being made. It was a movie I was hoping it was going to be made, um, but I wasn't sure. So the very popular TV series Breaking Bad is <laughs> actually they're making a Breaking Bad movie. Oh, wow. I thought they already did that, but okay. They did not. Everyone saw the character looked like he was dead, the main character at, at the end, and now we don't really know oh, where. Oh, that's or, right. Or, I'm or thinking sure. Breaking Away, not Breaking Bad. Oh no, Breaking Bad. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Cranston has another another writing scheme up his sleeve. Uh, um, I can't think of his first name right now. Brian. Thank you, Brian Cranston, who is the originator and the screenwriter for Breaking Bad. He was the screenwriter. Yeah, he's one I of the screenwriters. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so, in the, in, you know, early, early on, obviously, but, uh, and also the main character in, in the series. They were bringing a Breaking Bad movie out for all those of us who have watched all those episodes, all those years, to try and you give us closure. Wow. So, so I, I'm looking now, that's the 2020, though. Oh, um, not until then. Okay, wow. Still, well, that is something to look But forward still, to. I found out today that it was going to happen. I'm pretty excited. And Brian Cranston is somebody else who's just an amazing actor. I mean, he was so funny on Seinfeld. You know, he had a recurring role on Seinfeld as um, the dentist. He was like, he was the dentist on Seinfeld that everybody would go to if they, um, if they had problems. And, and there was one time when, when a uh, running storyline where Jerry Seinfeld you know, he gets ready to go to the dentist, and so Brian Cranston's the dentist. And I can't remember the name of the character that he played. But anyway, so Brian Cranston goes, guess what? You know, I converted to Judaism. And so then he starts telling all of these jokes, like these quote-unquote Jewish jokes that are really in poor taste. And Jerry's like, what? what? Why are you telling these jokes? He's like, Hey, it's it's our sense of humor that sustained sustained us as a people for three thousand years. And Jerry's like five thousand. Well, five thousand, even better, you know. And and then Jerry's like, you know, I have a feeling that he converted to Judaism just so he could tell Jewish jokes. 
And when he finally, he goes to, um, he goes to a Catholic church to the confessional because a Catholic priest is one of his, Tim Watley is who he played. It just came to me on Jerry Seinfeld. So one of Tim Watley's patients is a, is a Catholic priest. So Jerry Seinfeld goes to the confessional and, um, and he says, well, you know, I really just have to tell you about Tim Watley, you know, that he's your dentist, he's my dentist, and I, I, he's telling all of these Jewish jokes, so the priest goes, and this offends you as a Jewish person? He's like, no, it offends me as a comedian, because they're really bad old <laughs> jokes. So, so then, so then, he's, so then he says to, uh, he said, like, for instance, here's this one, um, uh, what, something about Raquel Welch, you know, what did, what did the Pope say to Raquel Welch, or what did Raquel Welch say to the Pope when they were on a ship somewhere, and, and, and the priest goes, well, I don't know, and Jerry goes, well, those aren't buoys, and anyway, so the priest starts laughing, and then Jerry's like, and so, he's like, no, wait a minute, and he just keeps laughing, because he's obviously thinking of of Raquel Welch going, those aren't buoys. So, um, so then, so then Jerry goes, well, you know, I hope you, rem I, I hope you do say something to Tim Watley. And by the way, um, what's the difference between a, a, a dentist and a sadist? And the priest starts looking kind of like, I don't know if I want to hear this. And Jerry's like, newer magazines. So the priest gets offended and just says, yeah, good, goodbye. And he just like shuts the door. And then he tells Tim Watley about the joke. And the next time Jerry goes to visit him, Tim Watley, he's like, oh my God, are you done yet? And Tim's, no, I'm just getting started. Because after all, I'm just a sadist with newer magazines. It's like, oh no. It's like, yeah, it got back to you what you said. Yeah, and no one said that. Uh, well, see, the th here's the thing. I just thought about it. Since Jerry's not Catholic, the priest doesn't have to, he can tell him to do anything because he's not Catholic. Well, he's keeping the Catholics so private. Yeah. Not, not the Jewish guy. Yeah. Yes. Oh, there you go. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a joke in itself, man. I think it was. Oh, my God. Anyway, all of that, that's a way long story to just get around the fact that, get around to just the observation that Brian Cranston is just an amazing actor he was he was so funny in Seinfeld and he just really personified like everybody's like best and worst nightmares of a dentist best dreams and worst nightmares of a dentist and but then he was in Breaking Bad in which he played this incredibly um you know this ostensibly good person who's driven to do all of these evil things because of circumstances and then he played Dalton Trumbo in the movie Trumbo about um, the screenwriter who became sort of the face of being victimized by the Red Scare and um, you know black being blackballed by Hollywood, and he was really good in that. And he's done numerous other movies, television shows. I mean, you see him working all over the place with yeah, the he is definitely working. He's in a movie with uh, Kevin Hart uh, as a man who was so. Uh, Paralyzed from the from the neck down, and he's wonderful. Hmm. So, yep, Breaking Bad. Looking forward to it. Keep your eyes open, everybody. Coming out soon. Well, another movie that I'm interested in is a movie called Black and Blue mm -hmm. with Naomi Harris. Harris. Mm -hmm. Naomi Harris, who is um, playing some character in the Bond movies. Remind me. Oh, she plays. She's the in the more recent James Bond film. She's Money Penny. My, okay, that's right, Money Penny. No. I never watched the Bond movies, so. Well, I, Money Penny in the Bond movies, typically in the in the past, especially with uh, Judy Dench played Money Penny. No. No. Okay. Wow. Um, <laughs> the James Bond movies with Sean Connery, uh, and many of the other Bond movies, the character of Money Penny is an executive assistant to M. Oh. And Judy Dench is M. Oh, to M. And Judy Dench was M. You're absolutely So, with that being said, she pretty much played that role. However, in the more recent films, Money Penny is like an agent, just like Bond. 
Only um, she's more of a supporter on the supportive end of things. James Bond being more of the flamboyant uh, character. Um, but Lenny Penny's uh, abilities and uh, role has stepped up into the modern world. Mm -hmm. And in one film, she's actually has a rifle and she's trying to shoot a, a villain that's fighting James Bond. And James Bond's not winning, so she's trying to shoot him off of a train. So her role in that film and in the following film, even bigger. So now that there's going to be a new uh, James Bond in the near future, uh, Lenny Penny's role, I don't know if that's still going to be prevalent or not. But I think she's going to be, I think Naomi Harris is going to be in the new James Bond movie, which is called 25. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, 25 years With Daniel James Craig, Bond. I think. Yes, the last film for Daniel Craig. Ah. And then after that, they'll introduce the new James Bond, well, which has already been established. Right. Well, Black and Blue, namely Harris, plays sort of like a like a relatively new cop who's on um, who's on an investigation. And you know, these days it's sort of like standard procedure for for law enforcement to wear body cameras to record how they manage their duties when they're detaining people or not detaining people, whatever they're doing. Um, so when they're approaching um, a, somebody that they want to detain or question, they're supposed to turn the body camera on. So she's doing what she's supposed to do and she approaches a situation where law enforcement is going to be needed and the body camera goes on, but actually it's some other, some other cops who have basically executed a drug dealer. So her body camera's on and it captures the whole thing. And one of the cops, or maybe they all realize that they've been caught on camera. So now this becomes a cat and mouse game where they want to catch her and, a, and a, basically assassinate her so that this film doesn't get out. That's what Black and Blue is about. Um, um, did I say Tyrese? Tyrese Gibbons, mm -hmm. Gibson is um, also stars in the movie along with Naomi Harris. So uh, it'll, and I mean, again, it's, I don't know if it'll be a great movie, but it should be fun. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, so I'll, <laughs> you know, I'll take it. Yeah, I think it was a base in New Orleans. Ah, okay. And I believe it's coming out in like October mm -hmm. of 2019. So watch out for Black and Blue. Speaking of black, I, mean, I guess that's uh, uh, in all kind of titles these days. Um, I'm looking forward to, and I guess I can't get away. I'm sorry, Karen, I cannot get away from the Marvel universe. Apparently not. Can't do it. Now it can't be Black Panther. It is Black Panther Two is coming out, but I'm looking forward to Black Widow. Oh right. So and and for those of you who have seen. Um, end game for the Avengers. Know a little bit about what's going on with Black Widow. Um, so the fact that they're actually making a solo movie about this particular uh, Marvel hero who doesn't have superpowers, just has some wonderful abilities um, that makes her special, is in itself going to be pretty special. So will that be Scarlett Johansson? And it should be Scarlett Johansson, yes ma'am. Okay. So, so I liked, I'm I liked her character that. in the Marvel. Oh, I did too. Um, uh, I, I liked it when she was on in, in Iron Man all the way through to the Avengers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, I think that's going to be a wonderful film, her isolated. And we get to understand and learn the reason who, well, who she is and why she thinks how she thinks and the people who trained her. Because mm -hmm. she was actually trained as a child. Oh, to wow. be an assassin. So it's going oh. to be really interesting to watch. Yeah, I think I might want to belly up to the bar for that one myself. Yeah, I think it's going to be great. And I don't remember what month that is. I think that's in the next three months. I think. Okay. And if not, yeah, beginning of next year. Okay, fair enough. I think I may be intrigued. I think you will. I think, I think Scarlett Johansson does a really good job in the character. Mm -hmm. and she's a she's good very actress believable. anyway. She's so. very believable. Yeah. And that's kind of hard to pull off sometimes with a character like that, who is also an expert martial art artist and 
you know, strategist and sharpshooter, sharpshooter and all that stuff. The great mind. Yep, you're right. It's going to be interesting to see. Well, the last film that I want to bring up is um, Another Guilty Pleasure. Uh oh. With the British connection. Uh oh. It's live action stop animation. It's a new full length movie for Sean the Sheep. Farmageddon. Farmageddon. That's what it's called. Sean the Sheep Farmageddon. I love Sean the Sheep. Um, I don't know if you remember the Wallace and Gromit. I do. Okay. Love. Animation. Absolutely adore Wallace and Gromit. Well, the creators of Wallace and Gromit introduced a character fairly early on in the Wallace and Gromit series as a, the sheep who gets lost from like somebody else's house who she just happened to be raising sheep. And the sheep, the, sh the sheep gets lost with Sean. And Sean ends up at Wallace's um, window washing house slash factory or slash office or whatever and is lost and that's how sean gets introduced well sean the sheep became so popular that a sean the sheep cartoon series was developed by the same producers with stop action animation except that sean was sort of like the ringleader of all these sheep on this farm and the and the, of course the farm was totally clueless about what the sheep are really doing but there's a dog that the farmer owns and the dog is hip to what the sheep are doing. So the dog is either helping the sheep or the dog is outing the sheep or the dog is, so the, the dog's so the dog's like the only smart, besides the sheep, is the only smart critter in the whole cartoon. So it's really funny. And uh, so, and there, there have been, um, there have been, there have been full length movie, or at least one full length movie, it's Shaun the Sheep before, but nothing, this recent. So I'm very excited to see Sean the Sheep Farmageddon. <laughs> I like the names like that. Uh, and, and other other things. Um, so I guess for me from the last one I wanted to talk about, and this one is um, kind of uh, mixed emotion for me because it pits me against our, one of our fellow critics, uh, Stephen C., who is uh, pretty much knows everything. He's everything Godzilla. Um, and it pits him against me, which is okay, because in my upcoming website, it's critic versus critic. <laughs> um, the ultimate battle I've been looking forward to seeing for years, Godzilla versus King Kong. Oh, Lord. 2020. Worlds are colliding. It is. It's, <laughs> Steve and my world is, are, is about to collide. That, that's very true. Because, frankly, there's no way that Godzilla's going to be King Kong. Um, just saying it on here right now, ladies and gentlemen. No way. No way. No, I think no. My boy ain't scared of no fire. <laughs> and if you need, boy ought to be. And if you need fire to, to oh, we'll snuff that out. <laughs> if you need fire to compete, then you're 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 just a wuss. Uh, All right. Oh wow, so, boy, you should do not a trash talk when Steve is nowhere in evidence. Well, of course, that's the best time to do that. <laughs> <laughs> There's no rebuttal. Right, you're not going to get a rebuttal from me. I but I would not bet the farm again no, on anything you have to say about that particular movie. Yeah, I'm just saying. It's, it's about time. Godzilla <laughs> versus King Kong, 2020. Well, I, Keep it in mind, that's, definitely, that's definitely one I want to see because I'm not much on monster movies, as you know, but I love Godzilla. I'm a total fan of Godzilla, and King Kong's okay, too. Like, I saw King Kong's go Island, and I felt like King Kong was misunderstood. I think so, too. <laughs> and my Godzilla is <laughs> This is not Mothra. <laughs> Do not fight with Mothra. Ooh, rare. Oh, <laughs> it's gonna be a wonderful thing. Yeah, you're not at all excited about that. I can no, tell. Not the least. I'm very with my rear. Big fat hunkin' blip. Yeah, humongous blip. 
like the kind of blip you need Dr. Pimple Popper to uh, yeah, get like, in. It, it's not even a, like a pin, it's a nail. <laughs> um, so I'm waiting for you, Steve. Ooh, wow. I heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right, well, that's going to do it for our show. Thanks, Movie Mayor, for traveling so far and coming out here and, and hanging out with us here on this end of A Real Point of View. And you never know, someone might be visiting the, the state of Maryland in the near future. And, uh, and me too. <laughs> Come maybe, on down. Maybe Steve, maybe me, maybe Larry. Uh, maybe even Tony. Oh my so goodness! I might rear his his head here. I'm, talk a little Star Wars. I'm all a Twitter with anticipation. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks a lot, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate you hanging out with us. And again, take a look at us as often as you wish on our YouTube channel, A Real Point of View. And we have um, archives. Yes, we have archives, not just on our YouTube channel, but also on our Blog Talk Radio channel. So uh, give us a listen. Give us a watch and learn a little bit more about the films that we've been able to view and the films that are upcoming. So thanks again for joining us here on A Real Point of View. Have a wonderful night, and thanks again, Karen, for hanging out. My pleasure, Greg. Appreciate it. See you, you next time. Take care, everybody. <laughs>